Plea bargaining hyper accelerates the racial disparities that we already see in the system, right? We know that black and brown people and poor people are disproportionately targeted by police and then disproportionately given harsher sentences by prosecutors and judges. Of course, if you take that system that already exists and then remove the protections of the Constitution, withhold discovery, impose harsh pretrial detention, uh, that's going to exacerbate those disparities. So, Plea bargaining reform is a racial justice issue. So the fundamental question is, can you have a legitimate, conscionable, fair plea bargaining in a system that is characterized by systemic racism and pervaded by implicit bias? And of course you can't. And of course in that context, if you're a person of color caught up in the criminal legal machinery, you are going to be subject in every instance, in every episode, every stage of that process by discrimination. And then you get into the biases that affect folks like us, folks who are called upon to defend uh, vulnerable populations. And you'll see that folks will get the case and immediately begin discounting what they believe they can achieve for the client. When that client is not white, when that client is poor, when that client is black and brown. And so, when you compound all of those, those points of discrimination, the end product, the outcome is always going to be more time. And that's how we see it play itself out in plea bargaining. You'll see people, uh, public defenders, defense attorneys, counseling clients to take more time when they're black and brown because they don't believe they can achieve much better. And it's built on nothing more than institutionalized racism in our criminal legal system. I have often sat across the table from a client and had a discussion about whether or not he or she should plead guilty. And that discussion goes very differently with a client of color than it does with a client who is white. Any client of color with any common sense at some point will look at me and say, I'm gonna get a white jury. I have a white judge. No juror is going to listen to my brother's testimony. They're not going to believe my brother compared to a police officer. They're not going to believe my friend. You know, my friends have been labeled gang members, or my friends don't have a job, or whatever it is that they are fearful of. They look at me and they say that they want to pass up an opportunity to go to trial, that they don't have the confidence in the system, not because they don't have a defense or not because they're uh, they feel that they are guilty, but because they know that they will not have an opportunity, a fair opportunity at trial. The plea bargaining process is, is done behind the shields. There's no public scrutiny. There's no, there's no public checks on prosecutors who are race, racist and giving black defendants worse plea offers. There's no constitutional rights that exist that hold the prosecutors accountable to prove their burden of that black defendant's guilt to highlight their racism and, and be able to show the public what's actually occurring. Or even civil rights challenges, you don't, those aren't even available to you during the plea bargaining process. So essentially the racism that happens, there's no check on it. With plea bargaining, you will have a number of ways where the system is just inherently coercive, where the powerful wield an, an uneven amount of influence over the process. So, for example, when you have a client who is in jail, jail sucks. Jail is designed to suck, and it's designed to have folks wanting to get out as soon as possible, as fast as possible. And what you'll have is people who are willing to admit to things they did not even do because they want to get out of jail. The only reason they're waiting for their cases to be resolved while they're in jail is because they're too poor to buy their freedom. And this disproportionately, of course, affects poor folks, poor black and brown folks in our system. And so when you approach a, a client with an offer that comes from uh, the prosecutor who has this kind of power, you're inherently met with a, a, a disproportionate and uneven relationship. So I'll have a client who gets this deal. I, 
I know the deal's not good. Client knows the deal's not good, but client wants to get out of jail. So the client will take it and forget about the collateral consequences they're going to face down the road because they want to get out of jail right now. What Fairchild is doing is advocating for policies which put a check on prosecutorial power during the plea bargaining process and also ensures that the plea, plea bargaining process is more transparent and that there's more public scrutiny. If we force folks to keep score, that is keep data on uh, on the offers that are given uh, based on race, gender, ethnicity, uh, income, and then hold them accountable for the disparities. It, just being able to call those disparities out, I think calls attention to the practice and would force us to be more creative in our interventions in how we are able to deal with vulnerable parts of our communities, particularly folks who are accepting these plea bargains so that we don't have the kind of huge disparities in how we're treating poor black and brown people versus others in our system. We're talking about a system. So a system that essentially protects police and prosecutorial misconduct by never subjecting it to any kind of scrutiny is a system that takes its toll out on the most vulnerable, it takes a toll out on everybody, but especially on the most vulnerable the people who are the subjects of heavy-handed policing, of over-criminalization in their communities. We are doing damage to democracy. We're doing damage to democracy every single day by putting all of the power in the hands of the police and prosecutors so that people plead guilty, not because they are guilty, not because they should plead guilty, not because they don't have a defense, not because this, isn't, this is a crime that really should be punished, but simply because the downside, the fear that they have of losing a trial breaks their will.